some other important topics of runway engineering and uh, we will mainly focus on the runway length analysis in this uh, lecture. So let's first solve the example that is related to Boeing 777-300. Assume you, are, you need to fly payload of 100,000 pound about uh, 3,250 nautical miles from 6,000 feet elevation runway. Determine the length of the runway. Uh, well, in this case, you can see that uh, the payload is 100,000 pound and uh, the range which is being considered over here that is 3,250 nautical miles. And you know, one nautical mile is equal to approximately equal to 1.9 kilometer or you can say precisely 1.852 kilometer <clears throat> and this 6000 feet that is the elevation and you are being asked to determine the length of the runway so we are going to discuss one approach or one method to estimate the length of the runway Well, you can see the performance weight manual for this particular plane, that is the Boeing 777. In fact, there are different models of Boeing 777. In this problem, we are considering the Boeing 777-300, so this is the relevant column. And uh, <clears throat> you can see that from this performance weight manual, particularly this column, which belongs to Boeing 777-300, you can see that the maximum takeoff weight, that is, in pound 53500 pounds and uh, the operating empty weight that is 299 uh, 299550 pound uh, for every plane we are having such type of charts and you can see here that uh, we are having along vertical axis the operating empty weight plus payload and uh, in this example if you just look at that the operating empty weight is about uh, 300,000 pound and uh, the payload is uh, 100,000 so it is coming equal to 400,000 pounds so this one okay and uh, here basically this chart uh, we are going to use uh, we are going to determine the brake release gross weight now what is the brake release gross weight when the plane is going to take off so what we do we just uh, apply the brakes and then high power will be <coughs> introduced or you can say uh, the maximum throttle will be given but the plane is uh, is at rest the brakes have been applied so at that particular case the weight of the plane that is the brake re release gross weight so just before the releasing of the brake uh, the weight the gross weight of the plane that is called as the brake release gross weight so basically this one this chart we are using to determine the brake release gross weight in this particular case. So you can see that the operating empty weight plus uh, payload that is to 400,000 pounds. So you are here, this one. And look at that, the range. Range here in this example is 3,250. So you are over here. So just move like this and from here like this. So you can see that uh, you are getting uh, uh, the brake release gross weight that is 520,000 pound so this line is meant for 520,000 so it means the brake release gross weight is coming equal to 520,000 pound now by using this particular chart we could be able to determine the length of the runway so you can see that uh, along the vertical axis we are having the runway length and along horizontal axis you can see that uh, we are considering the uh, 
break release gross weight that we have just determined from the previous slide. So you can see that is uh, 520,000. So you are over here. And then you can see these different curves which are meant for uh, different elevations. And you can see that this curve is meant for 6,000 feet elevation. So from this value, that is a break release gross weight of this plane, move up to this curve and then move in this way. So in this way, you can get the length of the runway and that is about 10,300 feet. So in this way, the runway length, which is required in this case, that is 10,300 feet. Okay, now we are going to discuss the topic of runway orientation or you can say we are going to study the concept of usability. The percentage of time during which the use of runway is not restricted because of crosswind component. So that is the usability, you know. Usability of the runway depends upon metrological and topographical factors crosswind component is function of airplanes mass. To understand the crosswind, so look at this plane. If the wind is blowing in the opposite direction of the movement, so we can say that wind is headwind. If the wind is blowing in the direction of the plane like this, in the direction of the movement of the plane. So this is called as the tailwind. And the wind which is coming across like this, this one, this one is called as the crosswind. So runway orientation, to decide the best runway orientation, analysis of wind is essential. Uh, it causes least interference and delays in landing, taxing, and takeoff operations if you are having the best runway orientation. Provides short taxi distance to end of runways. Provides adequate taxiways so that landing aircraft can exit runways as quickly as possible. The principal traffic runway should be oriented as closely as practical so that the crosswind is within the maximum permissible limits. It means that crosswind component should be minimum as possible. The orientation of the runway should be like that. Maximum allowable wind depends on size of aircraft, wing configuration, condition of pavement surface. Uh, guidelines are provided by ICAO for maximum allowable crosswind under different conditions. And you can see that uh, if the field length, that means the runway, is having the length 1500 meter or more, in that particular case, the maximum crosswind component that can be considered, that is 20 knots, or you can say 37 km per hour. And when the reference speed length is from 1200 meter to 1499, so in that case, the maximum crosswind component is 30 knots, or you can say 24 km per hour. And when the reference speed length is less than 1200 meter, then 10 knots, or you can say 19 km per hour. Now we are going to discuss the wind rose diagram and in fact with the help of that we could be able to get the best uh, orientation of the runway. Wind rose diagram it consists of a series of concentric circles cut by radial lines on polar coordinate graph paper. Radial lines are used to scale the wind magnitude. Each radial line is of 22.5 degree increment. Well, this point is very important that cross component less than 4 miles per hour is referred to as calm because there is no, uh, you can say, problem associated with that cross 
wind component when the speed is less than 4 miles per hour. It requires information regarding the direction and frequency of wind and uh, we can get it from the meteorological department. Best orientation is the longest line on the wind rose diagram. Well, now look at this table. Uh, percentage of time that winds come from particular direction at various velocities in all weather conditions. So look at that. We have we are considering the 16 directions: north, east, south, and west. These are the main directions. And in between that, we are having N and E, N E, E and E, and here likewise the other directions are there. And look at the true azimuth or the bearing. Uh, we are having the reference with the north direction of so zero, and you can see 22.5, 45. So you are having a difference of 22.5 degrees between these directions, all directions. And look at the wind speed ranges which we are considering 4 to 15 miles per hour, 15 to 20 miles per hour, 20 to 25 miles per hour, and 25 to 35 miles per hour. So from the meteorological department in this particular case, in this particular example, you can say that uh, we are having the 2.4 percent of wind coming uh, in the direction from the direction of north <coughs> uh, of this range 4 to 15 miles per hour and 0.4 percent we are having this range in the, this range 15 to 20 and 0.1 in this range of 20 to 25 and uh, we are not having any wind in this range of 25 to 35 uh, in this particular direction that is the north. So in this way you know we considering all the directions and you can see the values are written uh, and these values are the percentages of time that the winds come from particular direction. So if you just add all these values total is 2.9 if you just add these values the uh, uh, total is 5.7 in this way you are getting the total and if you just add all these values it is coming 91.9 and it is mentioned that the calm that means the crosswind component that is less than 4 miles per hour it is 8.1 and if you just add these two that is coming 100. So by using that set of information we can plot the wind rose diagram. So keep this thing in the mind that we are considering the ranges of wind speed 4 to 15 miles per hour, 15 to 20 miles per hour, 20 to 25 miles per hour and 25 to 35 miles per hour. And uh, these are the percentages of time that wind is coming from particular direction. So this is in the north, this is in north, northeast, north and east and this is the east, northeast and this is the eastern direction. Now look at this one. This is the wind rose diagram and uh, you can see that we are having the concentric circles likewise and you can see like this that uh, this is basically the circle meant for the calm and uh, this region is representing the range of speed of 4 to 15 miles per hour and this one, this range is for 15 to 20 miles per hour and this one for 20 to 25 miles per hour and this one is from 25 to 35 miles per hour. Now here you can see again. So you can see that uh, we have marked the different direction. This is the north direction. This is the east direction, this is the south direction, and this is the west direction. Now you can see that this one is northeast direction, and this one is the direction which is lying between the north and northeast, so that is why it is N and E. This direction is lying between <coughs> east 
and north east so you can see e and e so likewise we are having the all these directions so there are 16 directions that you can see and uh, look at the values when i showed that table you uh, i considered this thing that uh, in the range of 4 to 15 miles per hour you had the value of 2.4 so i have written it 2.4 over here and uh, for the range of 15 to 20 miles per hour we had the value 0.4 in that table so i have written 0.4 over here corresponding to the direction of north and uh, in the range of 20 to 25 miles per hour we had the value 0.1 so i have written it like that likewise if you just look at the east direction so we are having 7.1 2.3 1.9 and 0.2 in these different ranges of speed or velocities so similarly you know in this way we can consider that table and for every direction we can write the values the values from the table look at that so in this way you know uh, this uh, wind rose diagram can be generated design template Draw three equidistant parallel lines on transparent template. <clears throat> the middle line is the runway center line and the distance between outside lines represent the allowable crosswind component. Template is placed on the wind rows such that the center line passes through the center of the wind rows diagram. <clears throat> the scale for crosswind component should be the same as that of the concentric circles of the wind rose diagram. Along the center of the length of this template, a line is marked corresponding to the direction of runway. The two parallel lines, one on either side of the center line, is drawn at a distance equal to the allowable crosswind component, that is 15 miles per hour from the center line. In other words, two parallel lines are 30 miles per hour away from each other. So here we are considering the 15 miles per hour allowable crosswind component. So you can see that uh, considering one particular scale, we have drawn the three lines. And this is basically the line which is meant for the direction of the runway. Use of wind rose diagram. The wind rose diagram is fixed in position on a drawing board. A hole is drilled in the center of the template and it is placed on the wind rose diagram such that its center lies over the center of the wind rose diagram. In this position, the template is fixed by a pin passing through its center so that the template can rotate about this pin as axis. The template is rotated and is placed along a particular direction. In this position of the template, the duration of 4 to 15, 15 to 20, 20 to 25, and 25 to 35 miles per hour winds are read for the cardinal directions lying between the two extreme parallel lines marked on the template. The sum of all those uh, the sum of all these durations is expressed as a percentage and uh, it gives the total wind coverage for that direction. The template is then rotated and is placed in the next direction. The total wind coverage is calculated and the process is repeated for all directions. Now this point is the most important. The direction which gives the maximum wind coverage is the suitable, you can say the most suitable direction for the orientation of the runway. Now look at that. If you have placed the design template over here in this particular direction, now you can see that the values which are coming under this design template, this is a complete, it's okay. 
and uh, if you just look at this one this one is not complete where the 0.9 is written so you can see that it is about 80 percent so you can multiply 0 0.8 by 0 0.9 to get this value so the blocks which are completely under the design template you can just pick the values directly and uh, the blocks which are not completely under the design template so you can just by using the uh, your judgment you can get the value so it is about 80 percent is under the design template so 0 0.8 multiplied by 0.9 so in this way you can carry out this exercise and just add all the values which are under the design template so that would be the total wind coverage in this particular direction so in this way you can rotate the design template and you can consider all directions one by one so the direction that will give you the maximum wind coverage that is the most suitable direction for the runway runway length analysis the factors influencing runway length are of three categories performance characteristics of a particular type of aircraft and in that the trip length and the gross weight are to be considered safety requirements imposed by icao and airport environment airport environment atmospheric environment and the temperature and surface wind will be considered and uh, as far as the location and condition of runway are concerned altitude and the runway gradient are important runway length is the most significant factor in terms of size and cost of the airport length is usually designed for the critical aircraft which requires maximum runway length performance requirement imposed by government transport aircraft are licensed and operated under the code of regulations known as federal aviation regulations far the regulations pertaining to turbine aircraft consider three general cases in establishing the runway length normal takeoff takeoff involving engine failure or brake to stop and the case of landing the same criteria is applicable to piston engine aircraft the longest length required by any of the three cases is used design is done for controlled conditions of flying speed aircraft weight and configuration altitude and temperature so first case that is the normal takeoff case a normal takeoff in which all engines are available and sufficient runway is required to accommodate variation in lift off techniques this takeoff distance must be 115 percent of the distance required by an aircraft to clear an imaginary obstacle of height of 35 feet or 10.7 meter it is designated as d sub 35 all uh, not all of this distance would be a full strength pavement this distance should be free of obstructions now from this diagram you can see that uh, your plane has started its movement from this point and uh, from this point uh, uh, you can see the lifting of the aircraft has been started so this distance is called as lift off distance 
and uh, your plane has attained a certain height and uh, here we are considering an imaginary obstacle vertical obstacle which is having the height of 10.7 and uh, this plane has cleared that uh, obstacle so this distance is treated as distance to 10.7 meter that means to clear an imaginary obstacle of 10.7 meter height this one and uh, if you just look at that this is the runway and uh, you can see here the clear way has been provided at the end of this strip so you can see that uh, as per requirement this distance that is 115% of the lift off distance and uh, this is the distance that you are having the remaining distance this one and uh, there is one point which is written that clear way this is the clear way clear way cannot be more than half of this distance this distance you know and if you just consider this distance overall this is the takeoff distance this is called as the takeoff distance and that is equal to 115% of distance to 10.7 meter and this is the distance to 10.7 meter this one the next case that is the engine failure case Takeoff distance required is the actual distance to reach a height of 35 feet, that is D sub 35, with no percentage applied. However, engine failure is very rare. Also, engine failure case requires the sufficient distance be available to stop the plane rather than take off. This is referred to as accelerate stop distance. DAS or AST. Now look at this one. Uh, there you can here you can consider the two cases. You can see that uh, this distance is the lift off distance. That means your plane started the lifting from this point. So this distance is called as the lift off distance. But uh, if the engine has failed so obviously you can see the plane could not be able to fly and you can see that your plane has reached just over here the other possibility is that uh, with the failed engine you are having the takeoff and you can see your plane has taken off this one now look at this thing uh, your plane started acceleration from here so accelerate to v1 certain and here something has happened to the engine and uh, you are having the failure of the engine so you can see that this distance where your plane has stopped decelerate to stop so this is that distance this one and uh, if you just consider this distance this one this is accelerate stop distance so you can take it like that so this is the lift off distance if the plane has taken off and uh, this one you can see distance clear way cannot be more than half of this distance and in this particular case the takeoff distance that is the distance to 10 point just distance to clear the vertical obstacle of 10.7 meter that is this one then the next case is the landing distance case sufficient runway length is to be provided to enable safe landing for normal variation in the landing techniques poor approaches etc the landing distance needed for each aircraft should be long enough to permit the aircraft to full stop within 60% of its distance. Pilot approaches at proper speed and crosses the threshold of the runway at a height of 15 meter. Threshold is that particular point where the runway is starting. 
for ending. So this uh, slide is meant for the landing case. So you can see that here it is the vertical distance from the threshold of the runway that is of 15 meter, 15.2 meter more precisely. And you are having the landing here somewhere here, you know the plane will land. And uh, you can see that this one, the total distance that is considered the landing distance. And uh, look at that. This is the distance to stop, this one. Distance to stop, distance must be 60% of this landing distance. So this is the stop point. We could be able to stop the plane over here. Okay, now this table is portraying the typical runway lengths for the different planes. Boeing 747, DC-10, Concorde, 720, Boeing 727, and then some other planes. So you can see that, uh, that for the takeoff, you need these distances, and for landing, you need these distances. So obviously, uh, you can see here that uh, takeoff, for takeoff, you require more lengths. So obviously, you will have to consider these lengths for the actual runway lengths. Components of runway, clear way, I showed clear way in the, from on the previous slides. Rectangular area beyond the runway, not less than 500 feet width and not longer than 1000 feet. Extends from the end of runway with a slope not exceeding 1.25% above which no object protrude except for threshold lights on two sides of the runway, not higher than 25, 26 inches. Allows aircraft to climb to a height of 11 meter. So here you can see as per FAR and uh, you can see uh, this thing that uh, you can see the clear way which has been provided at the end of the runway and FAR, you know, that is the Federal Air Regulations. So this is the clear way which has been provided at the end of this runway. And you can see this thing again, the clear way and uh, which is provided at the end of the runway and uh, you can see that in the previous slide there was a slope and but here the slope is just equal to the slope of the runway. Stop way. SW. Area beyond the runway width not less than runway. Paved surface that allows aircraft to stop in situation of abundant takeoff. Engine failure in turbine aircraft is not very common as you know. Permit use of lesser strength pavement for turbine power, while for piston aircraft require full strength pavement for entire stopway. So here you can see FS and SW, and uh, keep this thing in the mind that uh, FS means the full strength pavement, and SW means the stopway distance. So I will repeat, FS stands for full strength pavement distance and SW stop way distance. So here you can see that on the clear way, we are having some part which is the stop way. Now this nomenclature is very, very important to understand the next slides. So you will have to memorize all that. So FS means full strength pavement distance, CL clearway distance, SW stopway distance, and field length. That is FS plus CL or FS plus SW. If only the stopway distance, stopway is provided, then the field length will be equal to this. And if the clear way is there, then the field length would be equal to this. 
LOD lift off distance I showed lift off distance in previous slides TOR take off run and TOD that is the take off distance LD landing distance SD stopping distance and D sub 35 <coughs> distance to clear 35 feet that is 10.7 meter or you can say 11 meter obstacle and DAS distance to accelerate and stop and that is also called as AST. Runway design concept. Runway refers to full strength pavement FS which supports the full weight of the aircraft. For turbine aircraft the regulations do not require full strength for entire takeoff distance TOD while for piston aircraft require full strength for entire TOD. So obviously when you are dealing with uh, different planes like that uh, uh, you are going to accommodate the turbine aircraft as well as the piston aircraft. So obviously in that case for entire takeoff distance you will have to provide the full strength pavement. Runway field length has three basic components. Full strength pavement also referred to as runway, clearway and stopway. So you can see again the normal takeoff case. So lifting has been started from this point. So this is the lift off distance and uh, this distance is uh, the distance to clear the vertical obstacle of 10.7 meter height. So this is this much distance to 10.7 meter and uh, you can see that uh, this distance is 115% of the lift off distance and this is the remaining distance and the uh, one important thing that the clear way cannot be more than half of this distance and this is the takeoff distance this is being considered the takeoff distance and that is 115 uh, percent of distance to 10.7 meter. Now consider case 1. Uh, runway length in the case of normal takeoff. So you can see that these formulas are to be considered and you can see that uh, the nomenclature that we have uh, already considered. So here the subscript 1 is being used. Look at that. So you will have to look at all these formulas. So these formulas are meant for normal takeoff case. The other case that is uh, the next one that is the engine failure case and uh, for that we can divide this case to two sub cases. The first you can say uh, case that you can consider under this engine failure case is the engine failure takeoff. Engine has been failed but still you are having the takeoff and the other case will be the case when the engine failure aborted the takeoff. So this is the case 2A runway length that means engine failure takeoff in that particular case you will have to use these formulas and uh, you are now familiar with the nomenclature that we are considering and here the subscript 2 you can see is being used throughout for the case 2A and then the case 2B that is the runway length engine failure water takeoff in that particular case you will have to consider these formulas and here in this case the subscript 3 has been used for this case 2B and then the landing case that is the case 3 the landing distance should be 66.7 percent longer than the demonstrated distance to stop SD of an aircraft crosses the threshold at 15 meter height that means the plane crosses the threshold at 15 meter height so here we are using these formulas 
and you can see that for this landing case we are using the subscript 4 and LD is equal to ST over 0.6 and uh, if you just recall the nomenclature LD the landing distance and ST is the stopping distance. So it would not be wrong to say that uh, there are four cases you can say and that's why we have used the subscript 1, 2, 3 and 4. The first case you know that is the normal takeoff case, uh, second one is the engine, uh, engine failure takeoff case, third you may say the engine failure aborted takeoff and uh, the fourth one the landing case. So that's why I have used the subscript 1, 2, 3, 4 respectively. Now to determine the uh, free length you can use uh, this particular formula which is uh, mentioned over here for the field length and the maximum of TOD1, TOD2 and DS and LD that will be considered as the field length and for FS maximum of TOR1, TOR2 or LD will be considered and then for SW that is the stopping distance that is DAS minus max and you know what is DAS you know the DAS is the distance to accelerate and stop so in this way you can get SW and you know the minimum SW that is uh, SW you know stopping distance that is zero that means we are not providing the stopping uh, distance stop wear distance so it is obviously equal to zero as far as the clear way is there, so clear way is the minimum of this, this or this and the minimum CL value is 0, it means that is not being provided and the maximum clear way that is of 1000 feet length. Now look at uh, this particular slide, clear way and the stop way is a part of the clear way you can see. Note, if both ends of runway are to be used by aircraft, the field length components FS, SW and CL must exist in each direction. Now there is a problem and uh, you will have to solve it yourself. Normal takeoff, dist takeoff case, the data is given engine failure case but you are having the takeoff this distance uh, the, this data is given and then the engine failure bottle takeoff case data is given and uh, the normal landing case is also there and this information is provided and you are being asked to determine the length of the runway so that means you will have to determine the field length rather you can say and uh, you will have to determine you will have to consider all the four cases and the maximum uh, field length that you are getting in and uh, out of these all four cases that will be considered as the length of the runway. Okay, now the next topic is corrections for runway length. If you have determined the runway length, then some corrections are to be applied and then in this way you could be able to uh, correct the runway length. So runway length standard factors, performance characteristics of the aircraft using the airport, landing and uh, gross takeoff weight of the aircrafts, elevation of the airport site, standard provides location of airport at mean sea level. Average maximum airport temperature the standard temperature at mean sea level is at 15 degree centigrade. Runway gradient standard provides for level or zero gradient of runway. Now the correction factors. Temperature, surface wind, runway gradient, altitude at the airport, runway surface conditions. First look at the temperature. Higher temperature requires longer runway. 
higher temperature results in lower air density resulting in lower output of thrust increase is not linear with temperature the rate of increase higher at higher temperature standard temperature is 15 degree fahrenheit or 15 degree centigrade at mean sea level increase in length is 0.42% to 0.65% per degree fahrenheit surface wind greater the headwind shorter is the runway direction of the wind also affects the allowable takeoff weight for the airplane a 5 kilo knot headwind approximately reduces the takeoff length by 3% a 5 kilo newton tailwind approximately increases takeoff length by 7% for planning, no wind is considered if light wind occurs at the airport site. Runway gradient. Uphill gradient requires more length of runway than the downward gradient. Increase and decrease in runway length is linear with change in gradient. Length increases by 7 to 10 percent for each 1 percent increase in gradient and the maximum gradient is 1.5%. Average uniform gradient. Straight line joining the ends of runway, no 0.5 feet above the average. Effective gradient difference between highest and lowest point divided by the length of the runway. Elevation or altitude. Higher altitude requires longer runway length. Increase not linear but varies with temperature. Rate of increase is higher at higher altitudes and vice versa. Increase of 7 to 10 per 1000 feet of altitude is for most of the airports. Well, if you just look at this point, that higher altitude requires longer runway length. It is because of the fact that uh, when the elevation is high, uh, then it means the atmospheric pressure is less. So obviously, in that particular case, uh, you need more length of the runway. Condition of runway surface. Presence of water or slush reduces braking resistance. Jet operations are limited to 0.5 inch of slush or water. From 0.25 to 0.5 inch, takeoff weight must be substantially reduced to overcome the retarding force of water and slush. Velocity at which hydroplaning develops for tire pressure ranges 120 to 2. 200 psi v sub p ranges from 110 to 140 miles per hour usual landing and takeoff speed and vp can be related to the tire pressure in this way and you know what is hydroplaning it means no resistance between tires and runway surface because of the presence of water Now, the summary of correction factors. Increase the required runway length at the rate of 7% for each 300 meter or 1000 feet airport elevation above mean sea level. Elevation factor F sub E is equal to 0 0.07 multiplied by E plus 1 where E is the airport elevation above mean sea level in units of 300 meter or 1000 feet. So when you are considering E in the formula and when you are having the elevation in feet, it will be divided by 1000 and that will be substituted over here. And uh, when you are considering the elevation in meter then it will be divided by 300 and then that E will be substituted in the formula. The length 
corrected for elevation is to be further increased at a rate of 1% for each degree centigrade by which the airport reference temperature exceeds the standard temperature at the elevation of the airport site. So the reference temperature is to be considered and the reference temperatures formula is this one. So you can see that here temperature T1 and T2 are involved. So when you are having T1 and T2, then you can substitute the values over here to get this T, which is the reference temperature. Well, here I need your attention. T1 is the mean of mean daily temperatures for the hottest month of the year. And hottest month has highest mean daily temperature. T2 mean maximum daily temperature for the same month. Standard temperature at uh, the airport site can be determined by reducing the standard temperature at mean sea level 15 degree centigrade at the rate of 6.5 degree centigrade per 1000 meter or 1.981 degree centigrade per 1000 feet rise in the airport elevation. So the temperature correction factor F sub T can be computed by using these two formulas. So this formula will be used when you are considering the elevation in meters. And this one will be used when you are considering the elevation in feet. And uh, here we are having the temperature this in centigrade and this temperature is in Fahrenheit the reference temperature and keep this in the mind that E that we are considering that is the given elevation feet or meter and it will be divided by 1000. So whether you are considering the elevation given elevation in feet or meter it will be divided by 1000 and that E will be used accordingly. If you have considered the elevation feet this formula will be used if you have considered the elevation in meter, so this formula will be used. The runway length having been corrected for elevation and temperature be further increased at a rate of 10% for each 1% of the runway effective gradient capital G. And uh, this effective gradient, runway gra effective gradient that is maximum reduced level minus minimum reduced level divided by L and L is the corrected runway length, more, uh, the, uh, the length of the runway. F sub G that is the factor which is meant for the gradient that is equal to 0.1 multiplied by G plus 1 where this G is in percentage. So here it is written that RL sub max and RL sub minimum are the reduced levels of the highest and lowest points along the runway center line. Now look at this solved problem. Determine airport reference temperature using information given below. You can see all the 12 months are mentioned and within this column you can see mean of mean daily temperature or simply we can say this is the mean daily temperature and here mean maximum daily temperatures are mentioned for different months. <clears throat> so we know that the hottest month of the year is June because you can see that uh, the mean of mean daily temperature simply the mean daily temperature that is the maximum one that is 40 degrees Celsius. If you just look at the various temperatures, you can see this thing that this is the maximum one. So obviously T1 is 40 degrees Celsius and you can see that T2 that is the mean maximum daily temperature that is 50 degrees centigrade. So by using T1 40 degrees Celsius and T2 50 degrees Celsius, uh, we can calculate the reference temperature by using this formula and that is equal to 43.33 degree centigrade. 
Now look at uh, this problem. Find out the length of runway have, having field length of 1800 meter. The airport is located 450 meter above mean sea level. The runway effective gradient is 0.5%. The monthly mean maximum temperature and mean daily temperature of hottest months of the year are 27 and 18 degrees respectively. Now the solution of this problem, the length of the runway that is 1800 meter and uh, here look at that correction for elevation, elevation factor F sub E that is equal to 0 0.07 into E plus 1 and uh, you can see here the elevation which is given in this question that is 450 and uh, it is in 450 meters so it has been divided by 300 and that is E so the uh, factor that we are getting that is 1.0 1.105 so the corrective runway length is uh, 1.105 multiplied by 1800 so it is coming 1989 meters then the correction for temperature uh, the reference temperatures formula is given you know T1 is the mean of mean daily temperature for the hottest months of the year uh, sometimes we call it simply mean daily temperature and T2 that is uh, the mean maximum daily temperature for the same month that is the mean maximum temperature. So sometimes we take T2 as mean maximum temperature and T1 as mean daily temperature. So you can see from the given data that T1 is 18 degrees centigrade, T2 is 27 degrees centigrade. So the reference temperature is 21 degrees centigrade. So temperature correction factor F sub T can be calculated by using this formula because we are considering the elevation uh, you know in meters but here the elevation has to be divided has to be divided by 1000 and we are considering the reference temperature in centigrade so you are getting 1.0892 that is the temperature correction factor now this will be multiplied by this corrected runway length and in this way you are getting 2166.5 meters then the correction for gradient, gradient correction factor, you know F sub G is equal to 0.1 multiplied by G plus 1. But this is the gradient in percentage. So you can see it is 0.5. So the factor is coming 1.05. Now this 1.05 will be multiplied by this. The most corrected uh, runway length up till now. That is this one. So in this way we have got. 2275 meter as the corrected runway length that is the final length you can say well uh, we considered these correction in that order elevation temperature and the gradient you may change the order ultimately you will be getting the same answer uh, there is another problem and you can see the normal takeoff case engine failure with uh, takeoff engine failure, bottle takeoff and the normal landing case determine the length of the runway after determining the length of the runway you will have to apply the corrections and you know some statements are given that the airport is located 1000 meter above mean sea level the runway effective gradient is 0.5 percent the monthly mean maximum temperature and the mean daily temperature of hottest month of the year are 26 and 18 degrees Celsius respectively. Okay, now the runway configuration. Runway configuration is the number and orientation of the runways and location of the terminal area relative to the runway. The number of runways provided at the airport depends upon the volume of traffic. Orientation of runways depends upon the following factors. Direction of prevailing wind pattern in the area. Size and shape of area available for airport development. 
land use or airspace restriction in the vicinity of the airport. Runways and taxiways should be arranged to provide adequate separation between aircraft in the air traffic pattern to cause least interference and delay in landing, taxiing and takeoff operations. To provide shortest taxi distance from terminal areas to the ends of the runways to provide adequate taxiways so that the landing aircraft can exit the runway as quickly as possible and follow the shortest possible routes to the terminal area. Types of runway configurations, single runway, parallel runways, open V runways, intersecting runways, combination of runway configurations. So here you can see different combination, uh, different uh, configurations. This one, this, 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 and this. So single runway. One runway positioned optimally for prevailing wind direction and other determining factors. So you can see the single runway. One runway position optimally for prevailing wind direction and other determining factors. During VFR, which stands for Visual Flight Rules Conditions, single runway should accommodate up to 99 light aircraft operations per hour. While under instrument while under IFR, instrumental flight rules, which are strict rules, it should accommodate 50 to 70 operations per hour, depending upon traffic mix and navigational aids. So you can see that uh, one arrangement, which is mentioned for the single runway. Uh, this is the runway, this is the terminal area, and you can see that uh, the taxiways are connected to the runway in this fashion. Parallel runways, four types of parallel runways are there, named accordingly how closely they are placed next to each other. Operations per hour will vary depending on total number of runways and the mix of aircraft. In IFR condition, for predominantly light aircraft, the number of operations would range between 64 to 128 per hour. So we are having such arrangements in the parallel runways, close parallel, intermediate runways, far parallel, dual line runway. So close parallel means less than 2500 feet between runways distance is there. Intermediate runways 2500 to 4300 feet far parallel 4300 feet or greater in between runways. Dual line runway 4300 feet or more between each pair. So these are the different arrangements under the parallel runways. So here you can see that the terminal area is lying at the center and the two runways are there. So either the runways are exactly opposite to each other or you are having the arrangement like that. Yes, this is also the case that the two runways are over here, two runways are over here, the terminal area is lying at the center and to the taxiways uh, these are connected, these runways are connected with each other. Safety and the effect on the runway capacity depends depend upon the separation of parallel runways. Spacing of the runways depends upon whether operations are VFR or IFR, simultaneous or staggered use of runways. 
Then comes open V runways. Two runways that diverge from different directions but do not intersect form a shape that looks like an open V. This configuration is useful when there is no wind as it allows for both the runways to be used at the same time. When wind becomes strong in one direction only, then one runway is used at a time. Uh, well, uh, for takeoff and landing, if the wind is in the opposite direction, so that would be the best case for the aeroplane. So you can say it like that, that your plane will take off, your plane will land uh, in an effective and easy manner if the wind is blowing in the opposite direction. When landing and takeoff are made away from two closer ends, the number of operations per hour significantly increases. When takeoff and landing are made toward the two closer ends, the number of operations per hour can be reduced by 50%. Because uh, in that particular case, the planes are uh, approaching towards each other. So here you can see the open V runways, terminal areas lying over here through the taxiways, the runways are connected. So L means landing, TO means takeoff. So you can see open V runways, landing and takeoff in this way, and landing and takeoff in this way. Intersecting runways. This type of configuration is used when there are relatively strong prevailing wind in more than one direction during the year. When the wind winds are strong in one direction, operation will be limited only to one runway. Capacity depends upon the location of intersection and the manner in which runways are operated. IFR, VFR, aircraft mix. This arrangement also uses a great amount of land area than parallel runway configuration. So you can see here the intersecting runways. Now review, review on runway configuration. Single direction is most desirable in terms of capacity and traffic control. Routing of aircraft in one direction is less complex than in multiple directions. Open V runways are more desirable than intersecting runways because in intersecting runways, you must be very careful that there must not be any conflict between the planes. For intersecting runway, place the point of intersection closer, close to the threshold. That means landing for landing and takeoff. I will repeat, for intersecting runway, place the point of intersection close to the threshold. So again, look at the different arrangements. Runway geometrics. Runway length, runway width, and uh, in that case, runway width requirements, runway shoulders, and runway turn pads will be considered. And uh, the runway slopes, transfer slopes, and the longitudinal slopes. Runway width depends upon geometric characteristics of aeroplane distance between the outside edges of the main gear wheels, distance between wings mounted engines and the wingspan. Operational elements, approach, speed of aeroplane, prevailing meteorological conditions. Now the runway weight requirements. So, you know, if you just uh, recall the classification of airports, we consider the classification 
by ICAO and you know ICAO means International Civil Aviation Organization. So in that you know we use the codes from 1 to 4 and we use the code letters from A to F. Now here you can see that uh, the minimum runway weight as per ICAO criteria that let's say your airport is 3B. So this is 3, this is B. So you can see that the minimum width required for a runway that is 30 meters. So in this way you can consider the other options. Runway shoulders. Area abutting the edge of the runway pavement is designated as a runway shoulder. Provide protection against foreign object damage. Now what is the foreign object damage FOD? It is a substance which would potentially cause damage to the aeroplanes. For example, runway debris, volcanic ash, or you can say the bird strikes. So runway shoulders provide sufficient width so that wing mounted engines are protected against FOD that means the foreign object damage. So here you can see that uh, this is the runway and the shoulders are there and this is the top view of this. For code D and E, overall width of the runway and shoulder should be at least 60 meters as you can see from the table. Bearing strength, turf over stabilizers, that means the grass over the stabilizers or the light asphalt pavement to support ground equipment and resist blast jet erosion. Cross slope for runway is 1.5% and for shoulders 2%. Now, runway blast pad, an area abutting the ends of the runway serving the same function as a runway shoulder is called runway blast pad. As per requirements, its length is in the range of 30 to 120 meters. Here you can see the runway blast pad, this one and this. So a specially prepared surface placed adjacent to the ends of the runways to eliminate the erosive effect on pavement surfaces by high jet engine efflux forces produced by the airplanes at the beginning of their takeoff rolls. Turn pads. Turn pads are provided if the runway end is not served by the taxiway. Minimum margin of safety between 1.5 meter to 4.5 meter should be provided between any wheel of the aeroplane landing gear and the edge of the turn pad. So turn pads, this one. Turn pads are provided if the runway end is not served by the taxiway. So you can see the turn pad over here. Transfers runway slopes. Provide drainage of water. Cambered or one-sided transfer slope provided transfer slope between 1 to 2 percent and transfers grooving along with prescribed slopes may be advantageous. So again you can see here the shoulders are there and uh, this is called as uh, the runway safety area you can see and the proper slopes are to be provided for the drainage of water. 
Now come to longitudinal slope, runway slope. Few runways are leveled throughout their lengths. Complete flat runway may require considerable artwork. Slopes are usually limited to 1 to 2 percent, but in special cases can be as high as 8 percent. One runways in mountain areas like that. Longitudinal slope changes are limited by runway profile to secure permanent and safe contact of tiles with the surface of the runway. Longer slope change limitation to ensure that pilot has adequate view of the runway. So minimum radius of curvature at slope change 7500 to 30,000 meter depending upon the code number of runway. So here you can see the longitudinal slope in this particular case. So you can see this is the longitudinal grade limitations for runway by FAA and this is the transverse grade limitation for runways by FAA. Runway surface. So ICAO, International Civil Aviation Organization recommends so ICA recommends that the surface of a runway should be constructed without irregularity that may adversely affect the takeoff and landing by causing excessive bouncing or pitching. It should provide good friction even when wet. Sometimes the surface of the pavement is grooved to improve friction resistance. Uh, to improve the friction resistance and to facilitate the drainage, Well, here you can see that the surface of the pavement is being grooved to improve friction resistance by using this special equipment. Airport drainage. It is one of the most important aspects of airport construction and maintenance. If the runoff is not quickly drained from the runways or taxiways apron. It will be hazardous for airplanes during takeoff as well as landing. So poor drainage adversely influences the pavement performance and life. Primary function of airport drainage is the removal of surface runoff quickly. So surface drainage, subsurface drainage and the diversion of water inflow from neighborhood. These are the three options which can be exercised. So first look at the surface drainage. At the outset, it is necessary to select a design storm for which drainage is designed. So here the outset means uh, initially at the start. It is necessary to select a design storm for which the drainage is designed. FAA recommends a design storm which is probable, probable once in five years. However, it is also necessary to check 10 to 15 year storm in order to assess the interruption to the operation that will arise. Subsurface drainage. The primary purpose of subsurface drainage is to prevent the entry of water into subgrade and the base course of the pavement. This is particularly necessary for clay subgrade in view of their susceptibility to moisture ingress as well as frost action. So here you can see the proper drainage works. You can see over here side drains, subsurface drains, and this is the top view.
and uh, this is you can say the typical runway drainage system we are having this one this arrangement or you can have the grating at the top water will be coming in this way and through this arrangement that uh, can be carried away so in this way we have discussed a number of topics related to runway engineering thank you